and Torino with NBC News in-depth tonight. Playing to win when many of the Olympic athletes suit up or skate by or ski down, you're seeing not only their natural abilities, but also a secret weapon that starts in the lab. Here is NBC's Kevin Tibbles reporting in-depth. So we'll show you what the secret weapon is in just a couple minutes, but I want to do a little thought experiment with all of you. And I'd like you to just for a second think about what it's like to look through the eyes of these experts. To just imagine for a second you're Tiger Woods lining up that putt to win the Masters, or Lance Armstrong climbing that hill in Tour de France, or Derek Jeter about to turn that double play in the championship series with a runner bearing down on him. Or perhaps just for a moment, change your perspective. Because now for the very first time, you're going to be able to see yourself through your physical therapist's eyes. You're going to be able to understand what your body is doing at every moment in time. <coughs> Introducing the Performance Runners Program. This video is actually the first known videotaping of a, of a runner. Susan Jorber's name? Edward Woodbridge. Edward Woodbridge. Yes. So our value proposition is by combining our physical therapy expertise with our state-of-the-art video technology, adding a functional movement screen, and of course our five-star customer service, Spear Physical Therapy is going to provide to the New York City running community a cutting-edge running assessment used to identify uh, injury risks, decrease pain, uh, increase their competitive advantage, and the combination of which will be very difficult to find anywhere else. The process is actually pretty simple. If you look up here, you've got the video camera. We're going to videotape runners on a treadmill. We're going to analyze it using Dartfish software on our computers. And we're going to be able to output information and take the patient through this with information that, that up until this point, it's just not readily available. And you'll be able to see every moment in time what is happening to your hip as you're running, your knee at heel strike, what's going on with your pelvis. We're going to be able to show the patient, stand next to them and say, look, this is what we see you doing. And that's, our, that's the melding of biomechanical expertise with state-of-the-art technology. So there's three key elements. Communication, being able to analyze, and sharing. Now as physical therapists, the thing that we do best, and you talk about strengths and finding our strengths, most of us are communicators. Uh, Patients come in, they go to their doctors, they go to their orthopedic surgeons to find out what's wrong with them, and then they come to us to say, what do you mean? Because we're the ones that really end up explaining it. So this is really just enhancing what's already our strength and our talent. So it's enhancing the communication. We're able to analyze things like we weren't able to before. You can see this woman is running, and you can see how that pelvis is not straight. And maybe that woman doesn't know that. And you can actually see the valgus angle with her knee. And so it's just enabling these people to see what's going on through our eyes, not just for us telling them, yeah, we did a manual muscle test, and, you know, this is what's happening, and it's really this uh, abstract thought. Now it's really concrete. And we can share it with them in ways that we weren't able to before. Down here, this is an example of a media book, which is a take-home DVD that we can actually hand to the, uh, to the patient, which will show exactly what they're doing. We can draw the angles and we can also record our voice to say, here's what you're doing at heel strike. Here's what you're doing at, at uh, foot flat. All these different instructions we can actually give them or just point out their biomechanics. And they take that home, they can compare that, they can look at that in a week, a month, or a year. Four key results. Enhanced biomechanics, competitive advantage, a decreased injury risk, and less pain. I think a big thing here is that it's a true visual outcomes measure. With, with the whole medical community moving <coughs> towards evidence-based practice and truly what's going on, this is actually showing you, you can see a before and after picture. You can superimpose your before and after pictures and see the progress. They come in one day, you give them a bunch of corrective exercises, they work with you for six weeks, they come back, you can actually get them up on the treadmill again, and you can show a before and after and superimpose it. And you can show them, hey, look at the progress you made. You see it. It's a lot of old brain stuff going on there. Uh, you can compare yourself. For those competitive runners, you can compare them to the winner of the marathon. You can superimpose the, the winner of the marathon on your running stride and just see how it looks. 
going, going, uh, going through the running motion. And it fills a void in the running community that currently is not there. It's a value add. It's a gateway to other clinical services. It's a gateway to our physical therapy services, to personal training, evidence-based, and it's expansion to other cash-based services like the golf assessment, the dancer assessment, ACL, <coughs> and the kinesio taping program that we have. So it really run, uh, runs hand in hand with it. Evidence-based. Susan spent countless hours putting this peer together. And we've got our, our problem identified, the intervention, the evidence behind it, what, what the physician should do, who, should, who they should refer, as well as a uh, reference bibli uh, bibliography there. And here's our one-page business plan, which we're going to go through uh, a little bit. So our vision. By 2012, the Performance Runners Program will generate a 35% profit margin and become recognized as the premier provider of running gate analysis in New York City. We'll be utilizing cutting-edge technology coupled with dynamic data collection and multiple angle video analysis to enhance performance and prevent injury for competitive and recreational runners. And just so you know, we're going to be doing this at different angles. It's not just from behind, but it's from the side, it's from the front, and you can really see what's happening on a dynamic level. Our mission is fairly simple. Achieve extraordinary levels of pain-free running performance. Make every step count. Our objectives. Our objective is to increase cash revenue to 162,000 by year two, to acquire 22 new clients in the second quarter of 11, 34 in the third quarter, and then 44 by quarter four. Uh, we're looking to achieve a 32% profit margin and 12% cross referrals to physical therapy. And just to point out, well, everything we've put together here, the pro, the pro forma, our objectives are for one clinic. Okay, you do this once, you can very easily roll this out to other clinics. But we just want it to be conservative with our numbers and just say, we do this in one clinic, this is what it's going to look like. Our strategies to build a word of mouth reputation for exceptional evidence-based outcomes. We'll be delivering community lectures. Uh, we'll be sponsoring 5K races. As you'll see later, we're going to be volunteering at the marathon. Uh, we're focusing on cash-based markets and offering multi-tiered packages to those different customer types that we discussed at the last onsite. Uh, we're going to be leveraging our relationships, which we, um, we have some, some very specific relationships with the orthopedic surgeon of the Roadrunners Club, the orthopedic surgeon of the New York City Marathon, um, <coughs> and the, uh, there's a podiatrist who's very well known as the barefoot running guru. And you know, I've spoken to, to these people. Um, I have a good relationship with them and have already gotten them excited about the program, bought them, got them the buy-in. So they've actually helped craft it. Uh, so actually the orthopedic surgeon of the marathon, he says, you know, I really don't know what to, where to send my runners, so this is great. You know, let's put it together. So he's seen all this. And I think it's just very important to get people involved early on, the people that you're going to be co-opting with and cooperating with. And so we've done that, and I think it's going to make a huge difference. These are action plans, which we're going to talk about in a little bit. And here's our anti diagram. And I'll just go over the drivers. A state-of-the-art movement analysis software, visual feedback in <coughs> real time. Uh, it's a true visual outcomes measure. I think that's a big one. And uh, another one that's really important here, I want to emphasize, is that the people that are going to be running this program are going to be trained clinicians who are runners themselves. I think it's very important for the patient, for the runner, to be able to relate to that, um, to that therapist. They need to have running experience. I think if you put someone out there who just doesn't really know the lingo and is not familiar with the terms, doesn't run themselves, it's not going to work as well. You need to put that expert there, and that lends credibility. Whether you're doing a running program, a golf program, you know if, if you're really intense about a sport and you're going to see a professional, really, you can tell right in the first three minutes if they know what they're talking about. So I think a very big driver here is to make sure that the people you put in charge of this program are going to be runners themselves. Our five-star customer service, of course, is, is a driver. Um, and the unique combination of services that we're offering here. I want to emphasize part of the So it's not just buying dark fish and, and putting a runner's program together, but it's the combination of 
the, of Darkfish, of the video analysis, as well as the functional movement screen and the massage and our clock tissue relationships. So we'll, we'll go through the portus by forces quickly. We feel like the threat of entry is medium. Well, just like I said, while anybody could just go out and buy the software, it's the combination of things that we're putting together in a cocktail, if you will, that, that makes this extremely valuable and the, decreases that threat of entry. Of course, we know the industry we're in, the rivalry rate is very high. The power suppliers is also high. The manufacturer can just change prices if they want, but the way we analyze the situation, it wouldn't really make sense for Darkfish to all of a sudden raise the price. This thing is only $3,200. Not a lot of money to start this. So for them to jack it up to 25,000, it just doesn't make sense in the marketplace. So it mitigates that risk a bit. And the power of buyers we feel is medium. Our target customers are upper middle class, health conscious individuals. The threat of substitutes we believe is low due to the combination of things, the FMS, the biomechanical screen, the screens, and especially our leveraging the relationships that we've got. So here's the real framework. Uh, yes, we believe it's valuable. We believe it is rare with our combination. Uh, it is not costly to imitate, and we do believe it, it gives us a sustained competitive advantage. So let's talk about marketing. How are we going to do this? Because you could put a great program together, but if you don't market it right, then it's never going to work. So the marketing piece is, is of course, crucial. And with that in mind, well, we'll start with the demographics. The, this is a, the key indicators for the Upper East Side of Manhattan. 73% of the population is between 20 and 65 years old, with household income higher than average, about 77,000. Uh, they're about 80% white collar workers, and the median home value is over a million dollars. <coughs> Nationally, the, there are 11 million <coughs> people who run 100 times a year. Uh, runners spend $125 billion on health-related goods and services. So much like the golf community, the runners community is, is a huge, huge, huge population to tap into. Um, the average age for a male is 45, for females is 39, and approximately 80% have a college degree. This is a, an example of our marketing plan. You see here it's got the target, when we're going to do something, in the middle, it's got what we're going to do, the cost here, we've got the point person, and we've got our completion dates. Uh, so I'll just point out this the community marketing and PR that we're going to do. Uh, we, we plan on, on doing a series of community lectures, which we already have developed, on, um, on running and injury prevention. And we've already spoken to the New York Roadrunners Club who's on board to have us do this. So they have these quarterly meetings and we're gonna be speaking at them. So the, the strategy, our marketing strategy is really utilizing our neuromarketing techniques that Lynn has taught us. And um, to really show how this is a game changer, this is not just your ordinary program, uh, we want to appeal to the old brain of our clients and our referral sources and um, Doc, doctors certainly don't have a great place to send these runners to. There is one other place doing something similar to this at the hospital for special surgery. I used to work there and I know what they're doing and it's nothing like what we're doing. So really no one is doing this right now, the way we are. Now, let's think about the old brain for a second. This is, a, this is our marketing piece to the patients. And it says, if a picture's worth a thousand words, how about this? See your running mechanics through our eyes. And with just a glance, you can see what's going on. It's not very copy heavy. I think traditionally we have, we, we put too much in words and it gets lost. So we just really wanted to go for something that's less wordy, a little more uh, diagrammatic, and just at a glance, you can understand what the process is. We want to appeal to those competitive runners looking to set a new personal best, and it's clean, crisp, and concise. That's what we're looking for, and it speaks to the patient. This is the one for physicians, and now we're trying to reach the old brain as well as the new brain. All right, so we've got old brain messaging here where you can see the before and after shot. This is somebody that was a traditional runner and then wanted to go to barefoot running. And you could actually see the difference in heel strike from here to here. You can see the difference in knee angle and trunk tilt and all 
of that is just readily available. You can see it, old brain. And you can see here what we're doing. We're just videotaping the runner and then speaking to the, to the runner, communicating. <coughs> so we have those visuals for old brain, and then we also have the new brain stuff, the true visual outcomes measurement. The doctors like that. It's evidence-based. It's, it's proof of something happening. And, um, and we have our call-outs. And again, we're going for, for just concise, not too wordy. Continuing with that old brain uh, philosophy, we're giving away gift certificates. Try it yourself. You've got to try it in order to feel what's going on. When you feel, you'll really get sold on what's happening. You'll tell all your friends. So we have this gift certificate where you're gonna, it's going to be given away as door prizes. And just we'll talk a little bit about our internal marketing and our external marketing. So internal marketing-wise, we have a message on hold. So anybody that calls our facility, any of our current patients, um, even any of our staff, anytime they're put on hold, they hear a message about our practice. And they hear all about our program, including the Performance Runners program. It's a call out. We have collaterals throughout our office, and we're <coughs> servicing our staff, including our front desk. It's very important not to forget that the entire practice needs to know what's going on, not just the, the PT tech team that you're choosing. So they're going to be the front lines that are going to field these questions. So if they don't know what's going on, if they haven't bought into this program, then, then we're missing something. So we're training our, we're also training our PT tech teams. And again, these guys are going to be running experts. If they're not running experts, I would hesitate to, to really rule it out. Try to get your, the ones that run. And of course, our newsletters, external marketing, we plan to do PR tradi the traditional way. Um, we're going to position ourselves as thought leaders in the running world um, with newspapers. We're going we're gonna to try to get on the uh, evening news, things like that. And of course, new media, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Uh, our three giveaways, referral source education, of course, is important. Uh, the community lectures that we've got and that we're going to be uh, delivering. We're going to sponsor a 5K. And this is, this is a picture of our group volunteering at the New York City Marathon this year. This was our tent. And we treated 1,000 runners. This was the view from outside the tent. This is the, the finish line. And it's just rows and rows of, of runners that just finished the marathon. Uh, so that was, we actually had an amazing time. Uh, talk about giving back. It was, it was surprising because we took a Sunday, all of us did, and we just really worked hard. But there was something really gratifying. I mean, there were runners from all over the world, and everyone just had an amazing time. So if you remember the last on-site when we got together in Louisville, we discussed customer types. We wanted to match our offering and our packaging to, the, to those customer types. So we put three customer types together. We have the sprint package, the marathon package, and the marathon elite package. So the sprint package is that entry level get in the game package for those either opportunists or reluctants. It, it includes the video analysis, multiple angles, a biomechanical foot screen, a footwear recommendation, and it's uh, $199 plus if they want that DVD of $29. Now remember, this is New York City prices, so we pay $42 a square foot, and we also have to charge a little more. So you have to adjust that for your own markets. The marathon package, um, for those committed to making a change, this is our most popular package, and it's for the pragmatists. Uh, it includes everything in the sprint package, but this is the level where we include the functional movement screens, which is a huge part of what we're doing here. Um, this is also where we include two follow-up visits with a trainer, and uh, the DVD copy of the video analysis, which includes that media book, is included. Then we have, for the person that wants every edge possible, they're not price sensitive, the connoisseurs perhaps, uh, five follow-up visits with a trainer, and two runner-specific sports massages, and that's $9.99. Now we're gonna also put this in the back of our branding, at the back of those marketing sheets that you saw earlier. So on one side you've got old brain, you turn it over, and it's all new brain. This is the second page of our marketing plan, and um, of course, here's just a, a, a photo of Jackrabbit Sports. That's one of our uh, co-optician relationships, <coughs> and um, it's a it's a sneaker store, which we work we work very closely with. They do some video analysis there too, so don't let that scare you. But all they do is they train somebody who works in the store to there's a there's an eight hour training session to just look at if you're pronating or supinating, and then make a recommendation. So there's no competition here, and I think it's very important to position yourself that way. Uh, I mean, we don't sell sneakers, so we've got to send our people somewhere. And 
and the same thing back and forth. So we have a good relationship with them. And they actually have like a prescription pad, like we do, where they will send to physical therapy. And of course, we have our, our Facebook. We're going to put it on our Facebook fan page. We're blogging about this. We've got videos on YouTube showing the, the therapist PT tech team and, and having them just talk about what their experiences are with running and uh, making them more relatable to the, to the public. Now I'm going to turn it over to Mario for the financials. <laughs> <laughs> so we, our financials, we did uh, broke down in pretty good detail. I had good information for <clears throat> what um, it cost during this practice. So um, I'm going to go over the highlights a little later, but just real quickly. Oops. <laughs> so this is for the running assessment. These are the revenue lines for the running assessment. Um, one of the things we assume that there's going to be some cross referrals. Some of those running assessments are going to turn into PT visits. So that's what Ms. Brown wrote this. Um, this one here is the additional revenue for those folks who buy the sprint package or the marathon package that has the extra FMS and um, the visits. And this last line is the marathon elite package for the, and that's the additional revenue you get when they buy the whole thing. Um, let's go to the slide. So we're going to go with the assumptions, source of capital, return on investment, and then how it will enhance the business. First line. So the first assumption is it's going to take nine months to ramp up. It's going to, uh, going to max out at four assessments a week by the ninth month, so you get 16 visits a month. So we think that's kind of conservative. Um, so that's the baseline number of people who come in through the door. Whereas the 50% of them are going to take the package number two, the marathon package and then 10% will do the marathon week package. And then one in eight will end up in physical therapy. So that's how our assumptions for the revenues. Startup costs, total of about $4,900. You got the video analysis software for $3,000. Um, if your staff's not trained up, it's gonna cost $750 each for the FMS training. And then a digital video camera, a pretty one, about $400 these days. Operating costs, we include administrative, rent, billing, taxes, and labor. The billing fees are just for the PT. Um, the labor, I'll go into detail quickly, but our biggest expenses were going to be from, sorry, from rent and labor. Like Dan said, they pay $42 a square foot for space, and we only assume 350 square feet. Um, and that hit our bottom line pretty significantly. Um, labor cost. So we assumed the PT was good. labor for the assessment was $35 an hour, personal training session $17 an hour, massage $50 a session. For the PT labor, for delivering PT based on some of the benchmarking studies that we looked at earlier this year, we assumed 55% of those costs went um, to labor for PT. Sources of capital. So this is a new line of service that will be integrated with the core business. Um, startup costs are relatively small, um, less than $5,000. Um, you can use a um, short line of credit or use a capital cost if you budget in your, um, in your budget process. Marketing costs, we assumed about 6%. Um, what I did is I took the uh, marketing plan that um, Dan put together, totaled up all the costs and figured out how much basically it would cost um, over two years and averaged it out and this came out to about 6%. And that, so that's how we worked it into our portfolio. So the revenues, the way we calculate that, spring package is 199. The additional revenue for the marathon package is 200, and then the marathon lead package is 800. And for physical therapy, we could calculate that $800. We spent two visits a week for four weeks for each one that came into PT. So here's our what the numbers look like. In the first year, <coughs> so in the first year, net rev. Uh, Gross revenues of almost seventy thousand dollars. After you take into account the operating expenses, uh, you get a profit of twenty-two thousand, uh, which is about thirty-two percent. Um, by the end of the second year, you're going to gross one hundred sixty-one thousand dollars with a net um, of about fifty-six thousand dollars. So in that second year, you got sorry. So the second year, it's a um, you're going to gross almost $92,000 from year to year, and um, the net is going to be $34,000. So overall, at the end of two years, we're seeing about 35% profit. So the total return on investment, when you take into account um, the uh, 
startup costs, we end up with a return on investment of forty seven percent. Alice against the business. It's a cash business, so you're not waiting for a third party payer, um, except for maybe the insurance side of things, but that constitutes a small portion of the total revenue. Um, it establishes a clinic as a leader in the running industry because we're combining the technology with the PT expertise. And this can be transferred to other uh, markets. If you have a golfer, someone who's really into golf, they can do this. It's really, um, for us, we do ACL screens. Our PTs and our uh, athletic trainers, we do jump training with some of our soccer players. So this is something that we easily transfer to that. All right. And just a summary, uh, the Performance Runners Program, be yourself through your therapist's eyes, and the objective, of course, is less pain, enhanced biomechanics, a competitive edge, and decreased injury risk. Our, we, we believe we have a unique value proposition with a combination of Dartfish, the functional movement screen, and the skilled physical therapists who are also runners. We, we want to achieve a 35% profit margin on $160,000 in 24 months. Our mission, achieve extraordinary levels of pain-free running performance, make every step count. Our strategies, strong word-of-mouth reputation, cash-based, and we want to leverage our existing relationships. Thank you. We have time for a couple questions for the next team. Anybody? And we also want to thank Chuck for all his help. Thank you, Chuck. He was invaluable. You got a question back here, Ralph. Yeah. I'm sorry. I want to know why Seth didn't present this morning. I had a few too many drinks last night. Thanks to you. You got it. Thank you for the drinks, Bobby. You're welcome. Where did you get the information of what runners spend? The Roadrunners Club was able to give us um, demographic information, mm -hmm. and uh, for proprietary reasons, they don't give out the New York City demographics, but they will give you national demographics. So that's where we're able to get it. I thought it was very well organized, nicely done, beautifully presented, great graphics. I think you have one question for Mario uh, about the financials. You can go back to the slide real quick. Right there. Um, it, it just appears to me, uh, as a business person, that in year two, after you, you've eaten up a lot of your sunk cost and your volume goes up, that your um, profit, the uh, cumulative <coughs> line, should probably go up a little faster than the revenue. In other words, the profit margin should go up higher. Yeah, it does that. I'm just curious as to what happened. Well, what, what happened there? What happened is after nine months, we maxed out at um, 16 visits a month. Um, he's got limited space. Um, he's only got two people trained to do it. Um, so basically, there wasn't much. We assumed there were, wasn't going to be much room for growth. So we maxed out at um, 16 visits a month. And just for year two, it pretty much stayed that way. So it's for insurance. <coughs> but why are you saying why the cost go up another third? Well, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm curious as to why the, the, the profit line, the green line, doesn't rise quicker than the blue line. In other words, profit margins, I think, should go up in year two over year one as you get economies of scale. Just, I'm just thinking from uh, the model. I, I didn't see your, the detail of the model. That would be my question if I were Yeah. yeah the, um, when I, I kept trying to figure out how to make it grow, one was to um, drop the rent, um, what we assumed to be the rent. The other part was um, the only variable cost that went up with the number of visits was the rent, because that, um, everything else stayed the same. Um, but we maxed out at 16, so everything after that became fixed, and uh, so it stayed at about 37%. It's 35% here because the first part of the year was <coughs> Last question. Okay. Here, Chris. Real, just real quick. Um, New York, you're going to get to speak at New York Roadrunner Club meetings? Yeah. How many people attend those meetings? Do you have any idea? Um, I would say it's between 100 and 300. Because there's, there's 39,000 members in the New York Roadrunner Club. Mm -hmm. It's huge. 
huge. Yeah. They, they get together in a, in a high school gym, high school auditorium, which I think Matt the whole 300, but I've, I've seen them. So I would say between 100 and 200. Right? Super job. So the way we're going to do this, this is much more simple than yesterday, right? Everybody's got a little notepad on their table that the hotel provides. At the end of the day, you're going to write down the name of the group that you think won, and we're going to just turn.